We're in the final days of September. The fall foliage is coming on strong. We're probably a week or two away from peak colors. But this also means our chestnut tree is starting to drop. A little bit hard to see way up there, but there's still quite a bit of our spiky nut pods up in the tree. Let's see if we can find anything worthwhile that has dropped that we can try to germinate. Here we've got an example of those pods that have opened up and released. Here's a, a chestnut too, but these these are duds and what I found is typically these are the first ones to start dropping and animals don't eat them. The squirrels come on really strong and are basically out here nonstop during daylight looking for these chestnuts and see a ripe one or a uh, pollinated one they actually got ahead of me and eat it. So I'm going to have to start coming out here more often to try to get my hands on an actual filled out chestnut which because of the spacing ah uh, darn another one Because the space between the chestnut trees I have on my property is such that I don't think they fully pollinate each other. Um, a lot of these chestnuts that fall are duds, but hopefully we can find some that have a chance to germinate. One just hit me in the back. I gotta find it. It felt hefty. Darn it. Where'd you go? So here's our chestnut tree as I was bent over here looking for for a, a good chestnut. One hit me in the back. It felt hefty, but I don't know where it went now. It shot off somewhere. All right. Got one first of the year. This is what the, the filled out ones look like. A little more volume to them. This one has a good chance of germinating first one of the year unfortunately all my seedlings got eaten by squirrels this spring so I need to do a better job but it all starts with collecting them right now so hopefully I can get a good batch of these okay was able to get five of these today pretty good ones like most things in life it's all about timing and the time is always you can see it's pretty warm out today. It's uh, mid 70s, which is higher than normal for sure. Um, but these last couple of days of September and the first week of October is when they always drop. It seems like right before the majority of leaves come down, which makes sense um, in the forest and that you'd have these laying on the forest floor and then hopefully get covered with the leaf litter directly after. So it gives it a chance to sit over winter and uh, then hopefully germinate and grow in spring. Oh, do we have more? Just found two more. We're up to seven today. Awesome. They are dropping by the minute. So I got to get out here and take a loop as soon as much as possible. Um, because if they're on the ground for any amount of time, the, the squirrels eat them during the day. And then at night, deer come and vacuum up anything that the squirrels miss. So even early morning is a great idea. Um, depending on where the deer are in the area. They don't come absolutely every night, but once they recognize this, they then hit it until they're gone. September 30th, I just picked up another dozen pollinated chestnuts. So I'm off to a good start for this year. And it is amazing. It's all about timing like most things. There's a couple days a year where these pollinated ones drop. The unpollinated ones seem to start dropping early, but there's a probably four or five day window where you actually get the pollinated ones. Again, I, I think the amount could be improved if there was a tree closer to this one, but there's still going to be enough. I'll probably get 30 again, 30 to 40 this year. that I'll have a chance of germinating over winter. So I'm really happy. Last year I made some trails through my woods 
and discovered I've got two more chestnut trees up there and I took I made an effort to search or pollinated chestnuts that dropped on those also but really it's kind of a waste of time they're so in the woods um, deer and squirrels are constantly active out there and my time is better spent in the yard on this main tree if I had enough time I could just basically walk consistently around it and wait for it to listen for them to drop and hit me in the head or um, find them that's how consistently they're, they're dropping now not quite as much as some of the acorns on the oak trees but um, walking around three four times gonna get a decent amount I think just have to get to them before the animals do it's the 7th of October and nut production has really slowed down basically at the end of it but I had a pretty good season this year blew away last year's harvest I was able to find 158 chestnuts some of these are extremely nice looking so I think it was a combination of there was more more in the tree this year more pollinated chestnuts maybe that was due to wind direction uh, while the tree was flowering maybe it had to do with weather but the other thing is last year uh, during that first week in October I had to travel for work so I wasn't home so I couldn't go around the tree constantly um, so this year I made more of a concerted effort I was home I could do multiple trips around the tree per day and was able to get a lot more chestnuts so the next thing is to get these in our germination setup so in spring we can transfer them hopefully to pots and start growing some trees this is my germination bucket so I leave it buried in the ground over winter these chestnuts need that cold cycle to spawn them to germinate in the spring I had moderate success with this I've got this bucket basically buried uh, to the lid here and I noticed sort of like turtle eggs you know like they lay them in the sand and it, depending how deep they are it controls how hot it is in the sand um, only my top layer of chestnuts ended up germinating so I'm hoping if I use the bottom of the sand here as the baseline and, and put everything at that or above, I'll increase my germination percentage. It's kind of tough because we only have a chance once a year to do this, so uh, let's try it and see what happens. Learn a little bit every year. The other thing that's highly variable in this area, depending on and what affects the ground temperature at that level is how much snow cover we have which obviously I can't control and or account for so I'm just gonna go off last year's knowledge that we had an average snowfall and snow cover throughout the winter so we'll go with that as a baseline so this isn't a pure peat moss it's a, a potting soil, but it's very loose like peat moss, not a hard compacted soil. So I think this will work pretty good. I'll mix some of this in with the sand and we'll see what we get. The main thing for me is that it's not a real compacted soil. It's a loose soil that we can get apart and get the chestnuts back out inspect them to see if they're germinated and then replant them in a different pot to then grow them so um, if we put it in clay or something like that we damage the chestnuts probably trying to get out of it um, i suppose we could screen it and rinse it with water something like that but a nice loose medium uh, makes it easier to extract them back out and plant them somewhere else all right, I have my mix of sand and potting soil, which is mostly peat moss, not really a lot of soil. I've got my chestnuts. Today's October 12th. They have stopped dropping. The tree is done. You can see we still have a lot of leaves up in the trees, uh, but that's kind of typical. I've got my hundred and some out of here chestnuts and nothing left to do but dump them in, 
mix it up and then hopefully in spring I have a bunch of germinated chestnuts I can transfer into pots and do a better job of keeping track of this year and grow them hopefully uh, to maturity. If I get 25-30% of these to germinate I think that would be great. I'd have more than I know what to do with. I'll be scrambling uh, to take care of them all but that's a good problem to have. I'll leave a couple at the top not completely buried experiment with that see if that makes a difference see if a couple of those germinate hopefully learn and keep getting better at this all right they're all tucked in for the winter I can forget about them for a while although I do have to work on Probably getting a grow light set up, maybe some racks, a bunch of pots. Be ready for this in spring. Last year I lost my entire crop to squirrels. I brought the pots outside to get some sunlight. And there's still enough of that chestnut on the seedling that those squirrels go nuts over for. And they dug them all up and ate them. Which was heartbreaking. Not gonna let that happen again. Thanks for watching. Adios.